This is the time of the year when speakers are searching the internet for ideas for delivering commencement addresses. And there have been some truly amazing speeches that have inspired many. Some very important life lessons have been offered. Like the one Steve Jobs gave at Stanford grads in 2005. He said, you got to find what you love. He divided his life into three seasons. Season one, when he was born because he had been given up in adoption. Season two, his being fired from the company that he founded and the lessons he learned from being fired. And three, the day that he found out he had cancer. Amazing speech, a speech filled with passion. Or perhaps you heard about Randy Pouch, Carnegie Mellon, speaker 2008. He was professor there at Carnegie. He only had two months to live. What an address. In part, he said, we don't beat the Grim Reaper by living longer. We beat him by living well and living fully. Very emotional speech, knowing that his end was near. And then there was Michael Dell at the University of Texas, Austin, 2003. He dropped out of college at the age of 19 and began his own company. He urged graduates to throw away the maps and, and to draw their own. He also said to never measure success based on the success of others because you may be setting the bar too low. And then there's Bono, the lead singer of the rock band U2, University of Pennsylvania, 2004. He urged the grads to use their intellectual and, and moral capital for good. In school, he said, you gather all this capital, but then it must be spent wisely. Very mature advice. And then J.K. Rowling, speech at Harvard, 2008, author of the Harry Potter series, was a divorcee early on in her life, and, and, and she went broke. She turned to writing and had a big impact on her culture. She said, it's our choices. It's our choices that show what we truly are far more than our abilities. Think more about your impact on the lives of others. And then Bill Gates, Harvard 2007, perhaps the most famous of college dropouts. Gates challenged grads to be more aware of the inequities of the world. He said, we can't afford to ignore the poor without harming our own future. We can use our accelerating technology, he said, to help solve the problems of the disadvantaged. And he's dedicated his billions to this end. And then Larry Page, University of Michigan, 2009, co-founder of Google. He reminded grads to show their love to those who supported them through school and life. He learned at Michigan to have a healthy disregard for the impossible. Listening to the advice of his academic advisor changed his life completely. He was encouraged to pursue the web, and the rest is history. Wise persons gather valuable pieces of advice as they journey. There are great minds to help us chart our course. Because we are in such trying times, we need inspiration from the best because we will need our best effort to address the issues of modern life. Bookend passages I consider helpful. Proverbs 19 and verse 20. Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. And then one verse away in verse 21. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. I offer you today five principles or passages to take with you. The first comes from the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. I, the Lord, do not change. 
No doubt your plans and your dreams are going to change. But your God never changes. Stay connected with the only truly stabilizing force in your life so that when there are changes, it will not throw you off course. And then there's Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as the some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. I think what the Hebrew writer is saying is find a good church home. Networking with people of faith will be an invaluable asset for your journey. Don't try to live your Christian life on your own. And then there's Proverbs 25, 6 and 22, 9. Do not exalt yourself in the king's presence. And do not claim a place among great men. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. Solomon was saying, pursue competence, not self-promotion. Daniel was elevated in a pagan environment by the government because he was competent. The same was true of Joseph. Competence will keep more doors open than self-promotion. And then there's Joshua 1, verse 8, and Matthew 4, 4. Meditate on the law, or the word, day and night. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is life's great discipline. Scripture will restore your soul. Equip you for good success. Renew your mind, ground you in Christ, and enable you to maintain your integrity. And then Jeremiah 10, 23. I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own, that it is not for man to direct his steps. Embrace God's providence one of the most mysterious and sweet doctrines of Christian theology. Our God is both sovereign and good. Keep his glory in focus and be a witness of how it all unfolds for you. So here's the deal. We love you and we believe in you. May your life be a story of faith and fulfillment. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for great minds that achieve much, but we're truly blessed that we can have the mind of Christ to direct our steps. Bless these grads and the place they will occupy in society, but more importantly, in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.